Well, hello and welcome to Healing School. Uh, we'll get started here just after we pray and we'll get right into the Word. Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for your, your Word and your healing truths that we'll see. And Father, we'll take them, we'll use them, and we'll apply them, and we'll see our lives change, and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be before you. I just want to take this time to thank my pastors for the opportunity. And today, I want to talk to us about a strong spirit. So if you have your Bibles there at home with you, watching online, turn to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. I'm reading from the New King James. And it says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Now, the Amplified, I like a little better. It says this, The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So, what I think this is bringing out to us is that, you know, we don't have time. We can't afford to just, if you're in a battle, if you're in a, in a, in a situation in your body that you, you have to be healed, okay, for lack of a better term, you don't have time and I don't have time to lay around and watch TV and not feed our spirit, okay? Because I liken it to this, and many of you know uh, the story of, of when my wife was in the hospital, and the doctor came in, and he was always, I don't like to use the word impressed, but he was always pleasantly surprised that when he would enter in the room that the TV wasn't on, there wasn't a whole lot of distraction going on. We were either reading the word or praying or talking. And I don't know if he knew necessarily what was going on, but he also knew that the TV wasn't going to see her through. The TV wasn't going to make her have to deal with it. See, now, and I know where he was coming from. He, he, he wanted her to own up to the fact that what she was facing was a, a reality in her life, and it was. But what he didn't understand is that we had a higher authority on that, and that we were building our faith in that area. But what I'm trying to get across to you is if you are in a fight for your life physically, you have got to build your spirit. It's not just going to go away on its own. It's not just, well, I go to that church, so I'm automatically healed. That doesn't work that way. See, let's read it again. The strong spirit of a man sustains him. The strong spirit of a man sustains him. Okay? Not, not the church that I go to sustains me. Yes, it does in, in a certain aspect. It can be life or death where you go to church. But the reason being is what you're using and taking from that church you're going to, are you applying it? If you're applying it, then your spirit will be strong. Okay? What's going to get you through the physical attack? What's going to get you through weakness? What's going to get you through bodily pain? What's going to get you through symptoms? A strong spirit. And we all know how the enemy works, but he's just waiting. He's waiting for us to get weaker. You know when you're sick. You know when you're going through, when you're going through a circumstance in your body. He doesn't want to just bother you. He wants to take you out because that's what he does. He's just waiting for you to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And the more that we're not in the word, our spirits are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. See, the enemy comes to steal. He comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. That's John 10.10. 10. But he has to wait until you're weak. But what if you're strong? What if, your spirit, what if you consistently keep your spirit strong? Then it doesn't do him much good. It's God's will for you to be strong. You have to see that. In the word it says, be strong. Never in the word does God say, be weak. So if you're strong, and I'm strong, and our spirits are strong, then how can it be God's will for us to perish with disease and sickness? 
It, it just can't. That makes absolutely no sense. If we're strong in our spirits, then we can overcome all of that. Because God's will for all of us is to be healed. Every single one of us. And that does not change and it will not change. Look in Proverbs here. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. And start here in verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. He said his words are life to those that find them. His words are health or medicine to all their flesh. Then he said, keep your heart. He's talking about the innermost being, your core, the very inside of you. Keep that. Keep your heart with all diligence. Now when the Lord tells us to keep something with all diligence, don't you suppose there's a good reason? Then here's why. Because out of it, out of what? Out of your heart, out of the most inner part of your being are the issues of life. The Amplified Bible says it this way. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. So where does the life that's in your flesh come from? It comes from God. But hear this, it comes from God to your spirit and through your spirit to your body. So then the condition of your spirit directly affects your body. So you could also think of it like this. If, you're, if your spirit's strong, then the condition of your body is going to be strong. But the flip side of that is true also. The weaker your spirit is, the weaker your immune system is going to be. So again, questions that you know the answer to, but what if your spirit's built up? What if your spirit gets strong and infused with life? The life that's in your flesh comes out of your spirit, comes out of your heart. So could God quicken you enough on the inside that life would just flood into your body and overcome the disease? Yes, absolutely that's what he can do. Let's read it one more time. Start there in 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Keep and guard your heart with vigilance. Why do we need to do that? I mean, what if you don't do that? What if you don't watch what's going in to you? What, what, if, you, what if you don't watch what's going into your spirit? Don't you suppose your spirit's going to get in bad shape? He said guard it. The Amplified Bible brings it out, above all that you guard. So above all that you guard, guard it. Your heart is the most important part of you and what you are. It's more important than your mind. It's more important than your body. It's more important than any other part of your being. Because you are a spirit. You have a mind and you're in a body, but you are a spirit. And where does that life come from? It comes out of your heart out of your spirit, because out of it flow the springs of life. Now, getting back to Proverbs 18, 14. The strong spirit, that's where we want to focus, is your strong spirit. It causes us to overcome the physical attack. Now, the strong spirit is important in every area of our lives, but in this healing aspect, it, it helps us to overcome physical attacks, those physical challenges. I really like it because it helps, it helps in overcoming symptoms because symptoms want to come and they want to talk and they want to tell you, they want to lie to you. Because, look, sickness is straight from the devil. And we know the devil is a liar. And we know that he has nothing good to tell us. And if his mouth is moving, he's lying. 
So those symptoms come and they talk, but hold on. If we've built up our spirit, if we've built it up and we've built it up on the word, then those symptoms are a lie. Do they feel real? Absolutely. But are they really the true me? No, they're not. They can't identify me, and you can't let them identify you. See, with a strong spirit, we can build a barrier. We can build a wall of protection that is so impenetrable that when the storms of life hit, and that's so important, storms are going to hit. Just because we uh, were born again doesn't mean that all our troubles went away. It means now that we have an answer to those troubles, okay? And we can build ourselves up so much that we can stand like the rock. We can be unshaken. We can be unmovable if we develop our spirit. We can become so rooted and so grounded and so established in the word that we can actually repel disease, that we can resist those, those, those symptoms. We can override the doubt in our mind. We can override the, the, the thoughts of you're not healed, you're never going to get healed, this, this sickness runs in your family. You can override all of that with that strong spirit. We can build our spiritual immune system to such a degree that sickness can't penetrate it, discouragement can't sway it, fear can't stop it, bad news can't move it, and adversity can't affect it. Now, here's a real good test, because you might be saying, okay, brother, I'm doing all that. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Word, and, and I'm rooted, and I'm grounded. How do I know if I'm there? Check what's coming out of your mouth. Because if you're really there, if you've, if you've really developed your spirit and it's strong, we'll know and you'll know because of the evidence that's coming out of your mouth. And how do we know that? Look at Luke 6.45. Real simple, real direct verse. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. So what's ever in your spirit is going to come out of your mouth. And I like it, I believe it was either, well, it was either Pastor Michelle or Pastor Steele, one or the other, probably both at one time or another, where you want to be like a sponge, is how they talked about it. And whatever a sponge has in it, when you poke it, that's what comes out. So if you take a sponge and you soak it in gasoline and you squeeze it, Gasoline's coming out of that sponge. You can want soapy water all you want, but if you've soaked it in gas, that's what's coming out. Same with your spirit. If you've been putting the word about healing in your spirit and that symptom rises up what, and is pushing on you, what's going to come out of you? The word on healing. But if all you've been sitting, and here I'll use me in, as an example, if all I've been doing is sitting and feeding on basketball, and that symptom comes up, all I've got to answer that symptom with is basketball. Basketball's not going to run that symptom off. As much as I love my KU Jayhawks, they are not running off any sickness. Only the word, all right? Now let's look at 3 John 2. And again, this is a, a real familiar scripture, but I believe that it'll help build our faith today. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. The degree of success we experience is directly connected to the condition of our spirit. The New Living Translation says it this way, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Hear that again. I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. So you can see the direct correlation. So without proper care, our spiritual immune system will weaken. And when that, when that spiritual immune system gets weak, that's when the door gets open for, for the effects of the curse. That's where the door gets open for, for sickness, disease, even with, in the areas outside of, of healing, that's where poverty, lack, all of these things. 
And, and it and it's all has to do with your spirit. Our spirits must be fed, strengthened, trained, developed, and exercised in the same way we do our bodies and minds. We've got to focus on it. That's why church attendance is so important. It's not because you're, you're filling out a quota. It's because you want to build your strong spirit. You want to build it up. It's like, it's like the, uh, the illustration of a faith tank or, or the gas tank, and, and, and you liken your spirit that to a faith tank. And every time you come to church, every time you open the word, every time you pray, every time you fellowship with, with God, you are making a deposit into your spirit, and faith is growing. But during your day, every day of your life, you're, you're expending faith energy. And so you've got to come and replenish, and no better place than right here in church. No, and no better place than right here in the Word. That's where you're going to receive your strength. We can become so spiritually strong that our mountain-moving faith will produce mighty results, unhindered by any force. When John said we should prosper and be in health, he added the phrase, even as thy soul prospereth. See, man's a spirit, and he has a soul consisting of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and he lives in a body. Thus, there is spiritual prosperity, there is mental prosperity, and there is physical prosperity. To prosper spiritually, you must be born again. And you know this, but hear this. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and make him the Lord of your life, your spirit is reborn and brought into fellowship with the Father. Then this puts you in a position to receive from him all the things promised in his word. So friend, I believe that, that if you're watching this today and you're born again, and I believe you are, you've got the promise of healing. It's right there for you. Just receive it. Just receive it and walk in it. You're in the right position. When you got born again, you put yourself in a position to receive everything that God has for you. So what do we do now? You're in position, okay, feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. Get strong. Look at Ephesians 6.10. says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The Amplified says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which is His boundless might provides. Joel 3.10 says, let the weak say, I'm strong. That's why it's so important that if a symptom tries to tell you you're weak, if if your body tries to see, because your, your body's going to want to talk to you, your circumstance is going to want to talk to you, and you've got to answer it, and you've got to tell it, no, I'm strong because the Word says I'm strong. Well, how's that going to come? That's only going to come by putting it in your spirit and you believing it and you saying it with that force of faith. Every believer has the potential to walk in a greater place of supernatural strength. The stronger our spirits the easier it is to receive, the easier it is to resist, and the easier it is to stand. So you might be in a position today where you need, you need everything. Well, praise God, you're in a good position because you find yourself where you're at and you be honest, and, the, and then you build your spirit because the stronger you get in your spirit, the easier it is for you to receive. Look, I wanted everything to change overnight. That's, that's not how it works. I have a part to play. And my part is to get in the Word, believe the Word, put it in my spirit, and then let God do what God's going to do. And we know what He's going to do because we have it in the book. We know what He said. He's already done it. It's the manifestation. And yes, I understand we're waiting on that. But you have a promise. You have a promise of what God is going to do. The Bible says you are healed. Okay, be strong in that. 
The ultimate goal of developing a strong spirit is so we can be strong and strong enough to strengthen others. See, I believe that you're listening today and you may need, you may need something to change in your body. Well, here's what I believe. You're hearing, you're hearing the answer. And then you can take the answer and you can apply it to your life. And then you can take it and share it with somebody else and then they can apply it to their life. And then they can take the answer and share it with somebody else. See, it's a never-ending, never-ending uh, circle, if you might say. It's just, it goes on and on and on. You can share this word with whoever will receive it and they'll get the same results because God's not a respecter of persons. If it works for me, it'll work for you. If it'll work for you, it'll work for your neighbor because God's beautiful like that. Now let's look at, let's look at a couple more things. Now I know we talked about how a strong spirit will help you receive. Let's get into that a little more. Brother Keith Moore said it this way. You can't catch much with a Snoopy fishing pole. <laughs> now, you know, you know a little Snoopy fishing pole, a kid's fishing pole? I mean, it's about, it's about yay long. I had one when I was a kid. Well, you, put a, you catch a little bluegill about that big, it's going to bend that pole. Well, you can't catch much with that pole. You, you try to go out there and, and catch a 15-pound catfish, it's going to snap that pole. The stronger the pole and the line, the bigger the fish you'll catch. I mean, think of that. I mean, I know it's a real simple illustration, but that's, that's your spirit. The stronger your spirit, the more you can receive. The stronger it is, the easier it becomes to receive. Look at Hebrews 6.12. It says this, Through faith and patience, endurance, constancy, standing your ground, we inherit the promise. Faith and patience. Faith and patience and build that, and grow that. Because your faith will grow. Your patience will grow. Reconsider your situation according to the word. I know that when my wife went through what she went through, it was seemingly, it was report after report after report after report after report from the doctor, and at the very beginning, none of those reports were good. Okay, so it was a constant and never-ending exercise in reconsidering that report according to the word. It was taking the circumstance and seeing the circumstance through the lens of the word. Okay, what are you going to believe? What are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on what the doctor said? Because I'll tell you, the more you focus on what he says, the weaker your spirit begins to get. Because you're feeding, you're feeding on what he's saying. And what he's saying isn't good. Or do you feed on what you see in the word? Do you feed on what is building your spirit? Do you feed on that? And then you allow that to push out all the junk that's trying to come in. That you decide. And that's the, dec the decision that she had to make. Okay, I can either take this and just accept it and just do, do what the world would say to do, which curl up in the corner and just, there's nothing I can do about it. Or do I take what the Bible says and say, I'm strong. Say, I'm healed. Say, I'm healed. Say, I'm cured. Say, I'm, I'm, I am exactly what Jesus says I am. Do I say that? Or I, do I say what the doctor says? Well, she agreed with what Jesus said. But it didn't happen overnight. It happened as, it happened as she strengthened her spirit, and her fishing pole got a little bit bigger every week. Okay, so as the reports would come, it was easier for her to receive what God was saying, and it was easier to not ignore the report, but to see the report through the lens of the word. Because ignoring isn't faith. 
You can't ignore something away by faith. That doesn't work. You know, I, I would be a liar if I, if I stood up here and told you that I didn't have thoughts of just burying my head in the sand and hoping it all fixed itself. Well, that, wasn't, that would be the easy way out, and that would take no faith, and there would be no good result from that. But no, I had to, I had to strengthen myself. I had to get a hold of myself and say, okay, what needs to happen? And then you target that with your faith. Okay, this number... This number needs to be such and such on this report. And this needs to be such and such on this report. It wasn't the, oh, this report, and it's such a bad report. Okay, what needs to change? Okay, I target that. I find it in the Word, and then I target that. So then you're seeing that report through the lens of the Word. Then a strong spirit will help you hold on to what you receive. Galatians 6, 9 in the Amplified says this, Let us not lose heart, and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. My wife could have loosened and relaxed her grip and still could. She could walk away from all those healing scriptures today and relax her grip on that and faint and quit, and I promise you, I promise you, she'd lose ground, all right? We can't quit, but that strong spirit that she's developed in this area, she's got a firm grip. She's got a firm grasp on what the Word says about healing, and she's not letting go, and so she's going to hold on to that, and it's going to see her through. Hebrews 10.23 says this, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Holding fast means to keep firm possession of. The Amplified says it this way, let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering. Hold fast. Don't waver. Don't quit. Don't quit. God's side is that he provides everything we need. Our side is that we have to use our faith and be doers of the word. Well, how do we be doers of the word? You don't quit. You don't waver. When, you're, when you make a, a choice to stand on the word and be firm in faith, you are choosing to do the word. You're doing the word because you're not wavering. You're fixed. Your heart is fixed. You know that you know that you know, and you can't be moved off that word. All right? Now, we've got to strengthen our faith and grow in faith. There's no excuse. A strong spirit will help us withstand impact and pressure. You know, I've been told that there's, I've never been to San Francisco, but I've been told that the, the skyscrapers there are designed to absorb shock of earthquakes. Now, look, I'm no engineer. I don't know how they do it. All I know is that they do it. Now look at, look at Luke 6, 47. Your spirit's the same way. You can develop your spirit and strengthen your spirit to the point where those, those storms, those earthquakes, if you will, when they come, that, you know, the, the skyscraper, it gives with, with the moving of the ground. All right? The same way in our lives, we're there and we're on the rock. Let me get there. You have to forgive me. I've got what some would call a fake Bible. I'm joking. I got my phone. It says this. Jesus said, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. You build your spirit. You build it strong. 
you get that firm, that deep foundation, the storm will not shake your house. It won't. It'll come and it'll beat on you, but you won't fall. Your, your, your house won't fall because you're founded on the word. All right? Look at James 1. And I know you know these scriptures, but it's like I, I tell the guys in the correctional facility, and it's so true. It's, it's nothing new. It's, it's nothing new that you need. It's what you may think you already know, and maybe you even already have it in your spirit, but bring it back up. Look at it again. Build your faith with it again. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Pressure on faith puts the force of patience to work. Build your spirit. You, your spirit will withstand that impact and pressure if you've built it up properly. Sickness can't penetrate it. I'll, I said it before, and, I'll, and, and we'll close with this. Sickness can't penetrate a strong spirit. Discouragement can't sway a strong spirit. Fear can't stop a strong spirit. And offense can't enter a strong spirit. We quoted it earlier, but it's from Psalm 112, 6 through 8. Surely he shall not be moved forever, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. So, my friend, your heart is fixed. Your heart is established because you are trusting in the Lord. And I believe that you're taking his word. I believe that you're, you're ingesting it, you're feeding on it, and that your spirit is growing stronger and stronger and stronger every day. And I'm here to tell you, sickness can't stay. So don't quit. Sickness can't stay in, in a believer's life who just takes the word and believes on the word and believes that healing is theirs and believes that Jesus took it for you already. It can't stay. But, you've got it, but it's not a one-time event. You can't just build it up one time and say, well, I'm good. No. It's, con it's in the consistency lies the power. You're consistently taking the word. You're consistently feeding your spirit. And you're consistently seeing victory. Amen? So with that, let's pray and then we'll close. Father, thank you today for your word. I thank you for what you have shown us today. And I thank you that faith has been built. And I thank you, Father, that we will take it and we will see great results from your word and that we've developed our spirits and will continue to grow in your word and continue to build our spirits and give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Well, until next week, I just want to remind you to keep the switch of faith turned on and to build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. God bless you.